I was very emotional to see that this idea of democracy, which is so flawed the way we've practiced it and we're learning how to fix it, but to go from where we were two weeks ago yeah. with that hysteria and destruction to the dignity and the hope and the faith of this. Married actors Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody went viral for their videos meant to inspire voter turnout for Democrats. And well, it worked. It's now day three since Joe Biden became President Biden. He's facing dueling crises of a raging pandemic and a lopsided economy that's left millions of Americans sick, broke, hungry, and scared. All presidents face tough scrutiny during their first 100 days, but President Biden is under some especially hot lights as the world watches to see whether his administration can pass and implement his $1.9 trillion American rescue plan. The plan would clean up the mess Trump and his circus left behind. So far, he's ex issued a flurry of 30 executive orders. Joining me now are the two people who played a huge role in getting out the vote that helped Biden win in November, Tony and Emmy Award-winning actor Mandy Patinkin and his wife, actress Catherine Grody. I'm so happy you both are here with me this evening. Mandy, I'll, I'll start with you. Burning question. Who came up with your hilarious get out the vote videos? Because they really were effective. Uh, our son, Gideon Grody Patinkin, and his dear friend and our friend, Ewan Wright. Uh, Ewan wrote them and directed them. Gideon filmed them. And Gideon uh, asked us the questions off camera. And, and so we were in their hands, and, and we did what they told us to. Yeah, he hired us, Serlina. He hired us. He said us. at the beginning, he said, I'm hiring you to work on I this election. That. Oh, that yeah. felt I love very it. Good. So he, he hired you, he hired you and put you to work. Um, but it was for yeah. a good cause. And certainly getting people engaged in the political process, I think, is so critically important, especially right now. And now that Democrats hold the White House, the House and the Senate, um, how important do you think, uh, Mandy, the first 100 days are uh, for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris? And what do you think should the, the administration's uh, top priority be? Well, I think the importance is the tone that was set during the inauguration, the the kindness, the calm, the lack of blame. Uh, you know, the old thing, you point a finger, there's three pointing back at you. There were no fingers pointed. There was only the work that needs to be done moving forward. Uh, my wife makes a head because she likes to point <laughs> fingers more than I do, but I don't. And I think we need to lower the temperature, calm it down. I think I said to Kath afterwards, I said, you know, I think he is the perfect person for the world, not just our country, the world right now. This is what we needed was a grown up, a calm voice, a peaceful person who's learned from a lifetime of service. And, and I think we're in great hands. I think time will give us the gifts of calm and growth and recovery from COVID, recovery from our economy and recovery from just fear and terror that we've all been in. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to tell oh, yeah. you that I, I feel really... like everybody is so scared. Go ahead, Catherine. Well, I'm sorry. We have a slight delay. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize, Elena, until the inauguration happened that for four years I had had a certain level of fear, anger, rage, and every day, seven days a week, I felt as a citizen, I had to respond in some way, do an action, try to be kinder, try to be less angry, try to be more. And so it's just extraordinary. As of the inauguration, I felt like I was a different planet. I felt I could breathe, and so many friends have felt this. And I think we just have to support each other, try and have Unlike minds, listen as much as they can, give this administration a chance, and hopefully if he gets money in the pockets of people that need it, help us with the vaccine, put people to work on infrastructure, climate change, my God, I feel for him. We need to not stop working to support them. I, I think all of us on I both sides. I keep saying sides. since uh, Joe Biden was sworn in that... Go ahead, I Go don't ahead. want to interrupt you. I'm so sorry. You have to. Oh, I was just going to say, I agree with Catherine in terms of, yeah, it's a little, there's a slight delay. So we're, we're going to work through it. We're going to do it live. We are live. Um, one of the things I, I was agreeing with Catherine about how I feel different since Joe Biden was sworn in. In some ways, you know, Trump not being on Twitter and not being on TV every day. I feel like my nervous system is having a chemical reaction to that. Um, and I yeah. certainly feel the pressure in my chest 
a lesson a lot. Yeah, we yeah. were having dinner the night before, and I had to uh, leave the table. <laughs> I just couldn't stop crying on Tuesday, and we were at dinner, and I went to just lay down in the bathroom on the floor because I didn't want to upset anybody. Finally, I just had to go to bed, and then... You know, like everyone does. Like, like everyone like, does. Like everyone, yeah. floor. like everyone does. Bathroom I, floor. I ran to the bathroom floor, <laughs> and then on the day of the inauguration, I just uh, I couldn't stop weeping until... The ceremony was over, and, and I, I realized when it was over that how much tension all of us on both sides of the of the aisle had been keeping inside of us and just, just trying to get through this very tense time that the whole country and world had been wrapped up in. And, and it was such a relief, just a release that I can breathe again, I can be calm, I can live. It's like time to get back. To living. And you know, Zerlina, what really amazed me in my reaction was that I felt so terrified the night before the inauguration. And then it flipped 100 degrees because it's like nothing so bad that good can't come from it, man. And I felt proud to be an American for the first time in a long time, because the one thing we haven't had to re-examine and don't have to re-look and rethink is a peaceful transfer of power. And with the greatest challenge ever, we did it outside peacefully and artistically and movingly. And it's like when we're going to get to hug people again with the vaccine, now that's going to be a miracle. And it was a miracle to see kindness and complexity of words and humor and humanity and not angry rhetoric, but hopeful rhetoric. It was just and, and completely Zer thrilling. Zerlina, I, I don't have the answer for what to do mm. the rest of today and tomorrow and the days and months and years ahead. Uh, I know the, the best avenue for me is to listen as much as I possibly can to everyone, to my wife, my children, my friends, my Republican friends, everyone on both sides of the aisle, and, and look for those openings of opportunity for compromise, uh, accomplishments that we can do together, whether it be infrastructure, economy, okay. jobs, okay. health care, schools, okay. kids going back to school. There's so, ma there's so much more that we have in common than that we don't. And when this rhetoric mm -hmm. of hatred, nothing worse than hate speech, and when you, when you gin it up, it just creates nothing but what we witnessed on January 6th, which we must never witness again, in our lives and in our country. We, 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 we can't let that happen. And it's up to each and every one of us. No one has the magic pill. It is up to each and every one of us to be a better human being, a better listener, a kinder person, a more empathetic person that this woman has taught me about since I met her 42 years ago. When this, that opening of her weeping and crying, her connection to humanity, all of humanity, all Americans, everyone all over the world is so profound. Mm -hmm. She can't hold it in. And it just makes me realize that we're just all, we have no skin left. It, we're just raw and we need to right. be held. We need to learn to hold ourselves and each other. We definitely need more hugs. Like I need a hug so bad. Um, last question is really, how do you talk to your Republican friends? I mean, how do we begin the process of reaching out to people who may have voted for President Trump? Not necessarily the sort of like QAnon element, um, but you know, those folks who are traditional conservatives that may have voted for President Trump a second time or even just one time. I feel like we do need to start those conversations. We can't just never talk to Republicans again. I take a lesson from our new friend Mondale Robinson, who talked to uh, he, he he talked to black men in Georgia who had been disenfranchised, and he would have eleven conversations, and the first six never had anything to do with politics. It was how are you, my brother? How are you, my friend? And my Republican mm -hmm. friends, I just ask them how they are. How's the family? How's work? How are you doing? I know what their politics are, and they know mine. So I ask them about their lives, their humanity, their friends, their health, and that's what we talk about. We don't need to talk about this politics stuff anymore. We are spent and exhausted. We need to do the hard work of connecting. I, our new daughter-in-law, uh, Lennon Flowers, is a co-founder of something called The People's Supper. Yeah. And she and our older son, Isaac, who works in a tiny town in public health, have had people suffer suppers of unlike-minded people. 
153 people in this little town of, of 500 people, and you don't start off with who did you vote for? You start off with where did you feel safe mm -hmm. in this world? What is important to you? You break bread first and see each other's common humanity. And then hopefully we can trust each other enough to listen and share different points of view, though I won't share different facts, but you know, different points of view and see what we can share in common in moving forward. And, and to encourage all of us, no matter who you are, or where you're from, to continue to wear a mask, socially distance, wash your hands and, and good health mm -hmm. practices, not just for you, for all your fellow citizens. We just came back from driving two and a half hours to Brooklyn to get our first dose of our vaccination, uh, and and we got the second oh, appointment, amazing. and it yeah. was so wonderful. The people were wonderful, and it was just I just encourage everyone, please go get vaccinated. Be it, persistent. It was the best shot I ever had in my life. So you you <laughs> you will you will save yourselves <laughs> and the world by helping everyone to be vaccinated. Don't be afraid. It's a great thing to do for your country and for your fellow man. And I hope, Serlina, we can be like that generation Absolutely. we talked about in World War II. We all work together for a greater good. You know, nobody asked in World mm -hmm. War II what side we to We all went to work to, to do what we had to do to survive that time and make it better. And hopefully we'll find a way of coming together now. And, and my wife. Absolutely. I love, I love that message. I think. I think that's the perfect message um, to end on. I'm sorry we're out of time. I'd love to have both of you back. I think that the videos Thank you did you. for GeoTV are absolutely creative and incredible and fun. Um, and I love the message of just being a little bit kinder. My mom always tried to, to uh, instill that in me growing up, and I think I take that into my daily life. Uh, Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody, thank you so much for making the time for us tonight. And please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.